Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of June 4th, 2020. Yes, I hear you saying, well, by golly, that's a full year of achieving, and yes, you would be correct. Alex, join me. Of course, this is my co-host, Alex, sitting across me virtually. Alex, please join me in giving us a round of applause. Yay! I'm double door clapping. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to walk here. You wake any sleeping child or dogs. I understand. Gosh, no. But um, no, it's been a full year uh, of posting on YouTube's and podcast service of your choice every single Friday, and uh, it's been a great year. What do you think so far? Looking back, Alex, it's mm, already been a year. That- yeah, no, it's crazy. That, like I was talking to my wife about it, and I was like, "Jesus, it's been a year it's, already." It's been it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's pretty quick. It our first video went live, I believe, June third, and it was a Ether reacts. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, to the Xbox. No, it would have been Ubisoft, right? Mm. I don't really know, honestly. It's been. I mean, it's been a year. It's been a year. Yeah. It's and it's, you know, a year full of content. Everybody should go check that out. You have plenty. Yeah, you have a full year, and you can listen to the first episode, and just hear how terrible we are, and then you can listen mm-hmm. to this one and see how less terrible we are. That should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh God. Uh, but before we get into the full news and parody of all that <clears throat> let's remind the audience that of course you can head over to patreon.com slash each achievers you can give us a dollar there and there is a of course an updated patreon full page that i just uh put up by the time you're listening you can look at the updated patreon pledges the updated patreon about me's and all that things everything is new on there so go please give it a read See if you like the new stuff. Give us the comments. Give us the questions, your concerns, everything over on Patreon. If you support us, of course, you can post there. Or, of course, if you want to scream at us, you can head over on Twitter at EVM1000 at a crazy frip skater. Before we get into the news, I will want to get into something very, very serious. And we're going to do it very quickly because me and Alex are not the ones uh, equipped to go into the socio-political uh, environment that we currently find ourselves in, specifically in America. But, of nope. course, um, Black Lives Matter is a huge movement happening right now. There's lots and lots of things. We all watch the news. We all know what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. If you want more information about all those things, I have reposted several tweets that I think everyone should go read. If you are frustrated on what's going on or feeling yourself lost, please head over to my Twitter at EVM1000. There are retweets that I have posted. One specific to Barack Obama has an amazing essay you can go read that will help you kind of channel your rage. And of course, there are millions of donation sites you can go to as well right now um, if you feel lost or uh, just angry at the word. I understand. But again, please head over there to facilitate any of those desires. We are not the we are not the two to take this uh, seriously. We want you to come here to relax a little, um, mm-hmm. and kind of forget a tiny bit. We even want though, to lighten the mood. We're the light. We're the mood. The we're mood like lightness. we're like cheesecake. Oh, cheesecake! Right. We we get gooey in the top, but if you need to, we'll get that graham cracker crust going. Mm-hmm. You're speaking my language. <laughs> there is no other way I can smoothly transition into the silly shit we're about to do. So uh, <laughs> I will just do that right now. Alex, we have a few news stories. Lots of things getting delayed. Lots of things to talk about. But before we get into that, Alex, I would have mm. to ask one question of you. What is it? What have you been playing? So last week, I think we talked about it. We completed man eater yes we did yes that was very fun so i jumped right over to mafia 2 oh you uh, did mafia 2 yeah the mafia trilogy came out uh we're waiting on number one to come out on in august i believe oh good job so, i didn't know that yeah it's a, i believe it's in august uh but i could be wrong if uh let me know in the comments um but i believe it's in, it's in august um I've been playing Mafia 2 Remaster, so much uh, so much fun. I, it's been so long since I played this game. Um, I really want to a thousand it. Ooh. But there's so many there's so many collectibles. Like literally the story, I can I've been doing this so quick. Uh like there's fifteen chapters, I believe. I'm on chapter ten or eleven, and I've maybe put in 
10 hours maybe 11 in the game so far like it's not it's yeah, it's not long at all story yeah you but said it's... chapter 11 isn't there only 14 or something like that 15 15. 15 15 okay yeah so i'm almost done with the story but um after the story there's collectibles that you can get like wanted posters all around the city and then there's play uh playboy magazine yeah so there is away. yeah oh, virtual high I, five there's boobs i had to kind of like get like I hesitated for a second because I was like, "Can I say Playboy?" But I like, yeah, I of was course like, you, know, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, yeah, you collect those and um, you get you get a, you can I think I believe you can replay each mission after you're done. I believe so. I was gonna do that and see how that works. If I don't want to do that, I might not. Um, I, I just go straight into Mafia Three because I've been feeling it. Yeah, Mafia Three. I'm I like I've totally, I never finished it. I think we talked about it last week. I haven't played the um dlc i want to go back to that but what i have been playing currently this week is i kept to my promise of last week and went back to persona, persona 5 royal you you savage uh, i went say. back finished persona 5 royal let let me not tell just it. finished it not just finished not it. just finished it not just, not just finished it i did platinum it i do have to pat myself on the back for that one it wasn't really mm-hmm. hard persona 5 regular was pretty hard platinum this one is very obtainable Still, still mm-hmm. a little difficult if you don't know how to play the game. Gave half your soul away. Uh, yeah, gave your half soul. That's all. Um, and then just a, just one pinky. So it's pretty good. Um, exchange mm-hmm. rate at least for a platinum. Uh, but Persona Five Royal. Uh, I forgot how much I loved Persona Five, and then Persona Five Royal reminded me, and then doubled how much I loved it. And yeah. I will say it right now. I think this is my favorite modern interpretation of a JRPG ever made. Ooh, it's bold words. Bold sir. words, but I ha- I have been obsessing about this game the last few days. Mm-hmm. Can't stop thinking about this game. I'm Damn. stopping myself from playing New Game Plus right now because I want to. Uh, one oh, of the yeah. things that they incentivize you with New Game Plus is they give you things at the end of the game when you talk yeah. to everyone that you ranked up fully. They give you an item that unlocks some of their ability when you play the game again. And it's really mm-hmm. helpful for New Game Plus, and I think you get a lot of money and things like that. So I, I want to get back into it. But I'm holding back because there's other games holding back because there's other games. So I'm like, okay, let me not go yeah. straight back into the 100-plus hour JRPG <laughs> I just finished. Yep. Let me you give need, it a break. You need to give some time to something else. Yeah, my game clock, I believe, was 95 hours. You can just call it 100 um, but Ooh. it is essentially 95 to 100 hours of full gameplay. It was so, f- so good. Oh, my God. Oh, so for good. sure. That's, that was most of my time, though. That, that was most of my time this week. I don't think I... Nice, nice. Off the top of my head. Oh! What? Oh, I almost forgot. Predator Hunting Grounds. Me and Alex oh, played yeah. Predator Hunting Grounds. How could I forget yes, that? That did. was so much fun. That well, um, sure, We played maybe one... I played one day of it because I didn't get a chance to play it again. But it was really fun. Yeah, I played roughly two full nights four mm. hours each i'd say i had a yeah. i had a black i'm surprised how much i liked it honestly i didn't oh, yeah. you know i thought yeah. i yeah i am gonna have fun i'm gonna shoot the predator whatever but i i the mechanics are actually really fun the shooting's a little janky i'd say um you do yeah. have to i had to turn up my sensitivity to make it even feel great you do get used to it though you do get used to it it, it is a yeah. jank you get used to it's not like unplayable by any means yeah. Um, but it is fun, and it's surprising because I did think in Friday the Thirteenth, it wasn't. You, I didn't have the best time playing the counselors, um, mm-hmm. but in this one, I have a great time playing the Marine. Like it's really fun. I love having the most damage at the end of the match. I love like, oh, yeah. like once I kill the Predator and I notice mm-hmm. everyone running away, and I'm like, I'm gonna defuse it. And when I defuse it, it feels so. You know, you f- you you feel like you like mm-hmm. took the pressure in and like. Oh, for sure. Like, dude, every time I see, I, I like, I, that last match that we were playing, I popped him in the face and I'm like, crap, his thing is, it diffuse it, diffuse it, because you're good at that thing. So I just started running because I can't do that diffuser. Mm. I'm not hesitating. So I just run and book it. What, what Alex just told everyone that listened is he didn't trust me. He didn't trust I, me I didn't, to, to, he wanted me to fold under the pressure. No, it's not that I didn't trust you. I just wanted to stay alive. <laughs> You're like, there's a 60-40, and I'm going to take the 100%. I don't die. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, I, I, I get it. I, I, you know, it's easy to mess up those things, too. The very last oh, one we played sure. was, I, he, he was I was at the very end, the literal mm-hmm. last second. 
and I clicked over it, and that symbol was right, and I clicked it, and boom, it, it made it. And I was like, oh, that felt great. Oh, it was, yeah, it's, it's so fun. It's so fun. Um, I, yep. I wanted you, so you could talk about the episode, honestly, to play a match of the Predator. I know you didn't have time to do that. But I did and have, I had a blast. I took a whole, I believe it was the morning of yesterday. No, 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 morning, mm. uh, two days ago. And I spent the whole morning playing as the Predator. And I had a blast. Okay. I j- was wrecking people left and right, taking out that machete-like thing and slashing them up. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Throwing the, the, the sword. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, I forget the name of it, but it, yeah, it's a sword, and I just slice them up, it's so cool. You can take their heads off and run away like the real Predator. Um, uh, as a Marine, you can resummon your Marines if they die. I fully wiped a team, and there was one guy left. He was able to get his Marines back, and I jumped them and killed them all again. So I got, like, that, like just that invigorating combat is so fun, just to wreck people like that. Especially mm. when you notice, it's almost like, um... Like real hunting, like when you notice one is like slowly skirting off of the group, and you're like, "Oh, I gotta go for him," and you jump that guy, take his head real quick, and run away, and then you like plant. It's almost like Batman. The that's the closest thing I can like think of, like in Bat- Batman: Arkham Asylum City, you know, yeah. all that like that. It's like it's literally like preying on these things. It's really fun, and I'm mm. only level thirty five, and really to unlock everything, gotta be level seventy. So yeah. I got a whole. I, I hit- more time 15, to play. so that's not too bad i i think on the first just on one day yeah uh, yeah i want to hit 60 to get the combi stick i think is what it is um yeah, yeah i think it's yeah. level 60 but i want that combi stick that thing looks sick like it's just a giant stick i can throw at people like that looks mm-hmm. really cool yeah i had a predator that like literally came at me with that stick and he beat the hell out of me i think if you throw it, it causes like almost a flashbang effect too or something like that it's it I'm, mm. i i want to get my hands on that thing um yeah but Hey, enough about me gushing of Predator Hunting Grounds because of how much fun it has. We have actual news to get into, Alex. Uh, oh, first, uh, let's get into just easy delays that we can really just stomp out real quick. So, bring it to me. Last week we we had a episode titled PS Five uh, Event, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Audience, you guys know. And with within a day, it was already confirmed that the event was going to happen. So we, it was almost kind of outdated. Not really, you know. You can still kind of listen to the episode. And then, bef- mm. right <laughs> two days before this podcast, they reannounced that they're delaying it. So within a week, we not only got confirmed we were right, but also delayed. So we were right then wrong almost again. So that was a fun back and forth of that. So that is now delayed to whatever they're going to put it to. Um, I'm assuming they delayed it a week, but they didn't tell us that. So mm-hmm. whenever that comes, it comes. All it said was delayed. Yeah, they just said they delayed. Uh, of course, due to everything going on right now in the protest. Something I didn't even know that was happening, to be honest with you. Cyberpunk 2077 Night City Wire live stream delayed to June 25th. Uh, did you know this was happening? This was apparently going to show the game off. did not. No, I didn't even know. I I felt like because I I saw someone talk about it, like they didn't want mm. Cyberpunk twenty seven and seven Night City to get delayed. I was like, the I was like the game, like the game's fine. I, I don't know why you'd be worried about that. And then this like the next day was posted, and I was like, what is this even? So yeah, it's essentially a live stream that they'll show the game off and talk about the environments and things. But I was like, oh well, okay. I wish I don't know. I feel like if I don't know about it, a lot of people don't know about because I follow all these people on Twitter and you know Instagram and all that. But oh, hey, maybe I just missed like, it. Kind of like a shadow drop thing, and uh, since it got delayed, they're like, oh, well, we might as well tell people. Maybe, maybe. Um, and then multiple seasons of games have been delayed. Uh, the expansion for Borderlands Three has been delayed. Fortnite Chapter Two Season. Three Three. has been delayed. (laughs) Sorry, that's very confusing to say. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I believe, mobile season also got delayed as well. The regular Mm -hmm. season, I believe, is still normal. The mobile did get delayed. Interesting. Real quick uh, drops to go to you guys. I do want to go straight into something I think is very interesting. We're going to go to um, uh, Windows Central here. Uh, Mercury. Codename Mercury is a large Xbox store update coming soon. So apparently this was leaked through an Xbox Insider program update in an app called Mercury. 
available to few testers with a splash screen that just reads coming soon please upgrade to access the latest and greatest <clears throat> and then they received a fuse message they're not sure if this is to project x cloud or xbox series <laughs> x or is this even lockhart but apparently after some digging they find out this app is a, a code name for an upcoming redesign for the full xbox store it's rebuilt from the ground up on whole new architecture designed for 4k tvs which sounds confusing that just means it's designed to look pretty on 4k tvs that's all that's all that means it's not it's not designed to sell 4k tvs or anything like that i saw Thank some people confused i saw some people confused i wanted to make sure they knew uh yeah. the new store app is also uh destined for use on next gen systems like series x current heart mm. and apparently it'll also come out on current gen as well um, and, it, and it said from what we've seen so far, the design of Mercury, quote unquote, Mercury store app is almost identical to what is available on Xbox One consoles today. With many of the changes appearing to be under the hood, it's possible that more features and design changes will occur um, when we get closer to actual the public getting testing because it's more internal right now. And then mm -hmm. the modernized design language uh, that is seen in Xbox app and then the Xbox game bar on PC or they're hoping that we get a more modern look on the actual store rather than we still have that kind of Windows 10 feeling. I know mm. you know what this uh, means, Alex. We're on this thing every day. But it yes. still has that Windows 10 square feeling. Hopefully this yeah. changes a little bit of that design. Yeah, hopefully. And um, I just tried just to, just for the heck of it to uh -huh. see if I can get on the the xCloud yeah. demo thing, the streaming oh. thing, okay. and it's not working. Oh, on your phone, right? Yeah, yeah, the game streaming preview. I try to sign in or whatever, and it just says, uh, like, try to sign in, and just says, uh, could not sign in. There was an issue. Try again later, and it just keeps doing that. So, like, it's having issues. I wonder issues if there's some sort of maybe. server maintenance, maybe? Yeah, either that or maybe it's something to do with this. Maybe they blacklisted you. They listened to this podcast, and they were like, we don't like this this Alex fellow here. We're, we're blacklisting wow. him from every Xbox channel we have. Wow. Phil Spencer himself said that. I don't know if you knew. Hey man. Speaking yeah, of Phil speak. Spencer, let me, let, me speak, let me speak to him. <laughs> Speaking of Phil Spencer, Xbox Series X Phil Spencer says players can't appreciate the true power of next gen yet. This is over on GameSpot. Xbox I boss. I appreciate it. <laughs> Alex said he will appreciate it, Phil. Please unblacklist him. Um, yeah, tweet please. that now. Everyone, tweet at Phil Spencer. Please not uh, don't blacklist at crazy at crazy Philip Skater. He did nothing wrong. I nothing. Xbox pause Phil Spencer has acknowledged that it's been challenging to dis, uh, demonstrate the true leap that the Xbox Series X will provide over the Xbox One, but it appears that could be changing once people are actually able to try out the systems for themselves in longer gameplay sessions. In Reggie fils former uh, Nintendo president uh, new podcast, Spencer said one of the most defining characteristics of next gen games is how they quote unquote feel with faster and more stable frame rates you haven't seen the true power of xbox series x yet as it appears that microsoft is taking on the persona of a dragon ball z villain still gathering their energy it's not oh, possible wow. to, <laughs> to <laughs> shout out to GameSpot. that's a good that's a good one liner in, in a very nice article it's mm -hmm. not possible to demonstrate this video, Spencer said. And with uh, physical events canceled or postponed due to COVID-19, Microsoft is facing a new dilemma in trying to communicate the appeal of faster frame rates. This is a new challenge, Spencer said, because for previous console transitions throughout history, the power of new systems was immediately apparent with better graphics. One of the things I've talked about publicly, but it's hard to come across, is the way it feels to play the game on a box where frame rates are higher, frame rates are more stable, as Spencer said. The fluidity of it showing that in video form, it's just impossible. How do you show how something feels? He added, quote, we're getting to the point where the immersion feel that you get through fluidity and other things is now up to par with the visual compatibilities that we have how do you share that with people in this kind of world, end quote. Spencer said he's optimistic about being able to put Xbox Series X in front of consumers at some point in, f in the future before launch to help them understand the appeal of the new system. It's unlikely to happen soon due to government restrictions around social distancing. Quote, the feel relative to previous console generations will be something people remark positively about. 
end quote, Spencer said. Uh, the Xbox Series X is technically capable of delivering frame rates up to 120 frames per second, but developers will ultimately get to decide what works best in terms of balance between visuals and frame rates. To stop right there very quickly, Alex. Mm. Is it acceptable with Xbox Series X when it launches to get a game that runs at 30 frames per second? What do you think about that? You, let's say we get a game from Ubisoft. The new Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to run at 30 frames per second. Is that acceptable to you? Mm. No, because they keep talking about They keep promising that it's going to be high, like good. I very much am in the frame of we're getting close to no. Very much no. I think I think standardized 60 frames per second for any action adventure or uh, first person shooter <clears throat> mm-hmm. is it should be the standard now. Um, no, I don't for sure, I, yeah. I, I 30 frames per second shovel, you know, shovel knight, these things like that and eh, whatever. I, I you know, uh side scrollers, I don't really play them so I don't care. I don't even know if frame rates matter with those games, but mm-hmm. 60 frames needs to be standardized. 120 frames is like extra credit and I would love that. Um, get, please give that to my face on my beautiful TV. <laughs> um, so I want that, but I would. I hope we are getting to a normalization of 60 frames because 60 frames, I feel like, is a huge jump from 30. And I would not have said that two years ago. Two years ago, I didn't even care about frames, and I thought it was silly to even talk about them. <laughs> and then I remember playing um, uh, Borderlands 3 with you, Alex. That really hit me in the face. Oh, for when sure, I dude. started the game and like saw the frames, I was like, "What is happening? What is happening?" And I immediately went to the settings, found the frame rate, um, prior prioritization, clicked that. Yep. Way back, hit sixty frames. Did the visual quality go down? I don't even. I didn't even notice, but maybe it did. But I could tell slightly, but I'd rather have the frame rate. Dude. The frame rate was in. It was in. And I didn't even say anything to you. As soon as you joined the game, you said this exact same thing. You're like, "What is going on with this game?" And I was like, "Hey, I did the same thing. Go to your settings, prioritize frames." <laughs> Whoo! Mm-hmm. That is the first one where I was like, "This needs to be in everything now," because because now we're all used to it. Eventually, when we all get used to it, then we're all gonna bitch about it and not being things. Yep. Back to the article. Also in the interview, Spencer reiterated that he expects Xbox Series X launch to go forward as planned this holiday. He said his team are doing an, quote, amazing job, end quote, during a challenging environment. We had another hardware review. We did that this week. Our supply chain, we feel good about the hardware side. It feels like we'll be able to get enough units. We're pretty committed to the whole uh, worldwide launch, which regretfully we didn't do with Xbox One, Spencer said. The software of the Xbox Series X is also, quote-unquote, making good progress. Spencer said he added the game development is also moving along, but with some interruption. Games are making good progress. The collaborative nation of game development and the scale of game development today, uh, any of the functions that require physical uh, collaboration, things like motion capture, things like uh, symphonic capture, those kinds of things, some of them have been put on hold on the game side of things that are pre-content complete might be impacted more than things that are post-content complete. Uh, Mm. Like he said, things like motion capture and things you actually have to do before you can actually start making the game. Um, And then some of the... uh, It goes down and on. You can read the uh, full interview on GameSpot, of course. We'll end it there because that is where it stops getting interested for me. But it was a very great article on GameSpot. Cool uh, introspective on looking at just Spencer's thinking right now. It's very nice to hear that we're still on track for Series X to launch worldwide. Can't wait. Sounds like the only thing we're trepidatious about is the actual games. Like, the games seem to might be getting delayed, which is scary. Um, I, I know an analyst said recently, uh, within the last month or so, that we're not going to really experience delays this year. That's not the issue. Next year is when we'll most likely see full game delays. Um, we might have a... Uh, sh- uh, not as packed next year because of all the COVID-related um, setbacks. So mm-hmm. be prepared for that. Moving on. Oh, before we move on to that, Alex, did you have anything to share about that uh, amazing article um, from GameSpot? No, I just hope that um, they're true to their word in a way to like how you said, like I mean, that it should be a standard now to like for everything, everything being sixty frames, things yeah. like that. So yeah. like if they, if it's not, then I'm like, 
what are you doing over there? Yeah, we got to hold developers accountable if they're not doing, you know, what what we'd like. We do have to, and, you know, people who buy games, we're really bad at that, but we have to find mm-hmm. ways of holding these guys accountable if it's something we don't want or we yeah. do want. Sony has, says it has no interest in making its PlayStation 5 games compatible with PlayStation 4. Um, and this is over with Jim Ryan making a statement um, with Eurogamer. Uh, quote, in our view, people should make games that can make the most of those features, whether it's dual sense controller, whether it's 3D audio, whether it's multiple ways that the SSD can be used. We are thinking that it's time to give the PlayStation community something new, something different, that can only be enjoyed on PlayStation 5. Ryan stressed, however, that Sony wouldn't be abandoning its 100 million strong PlayStation 4 audience anytime soon. We have always felt that we have a responsibility to serve that PS4 community for several years after the launch of PS5, he said, acknowledging that it, quote-unquote, represented a huge business opportunity for the community. The number are quite straightforward, he continued. If you stay in brand broad bush figures that we have a community of 100 million PS4 users right now, and in the first couple of years, I don't know, somewhere between 15 and 25 million might migrate to PS5, that still leaves a large, huge number of people with PS4s, and that community is demonstrating an amazing stickiness and willingness to stay engaged that I think the events of the past few months have just reinforced what we knew already. Interesting to think about, mm-hmm. right? We are hearing the exact opposite from Phil and the Xbox team. They are yep. 100% guaranteeing you can play any Series X on your Xbox One. Everything is backwards compatible. For up to... Th- Three years. Am I correct on that, Alex? I believe that's the statement that they said a few months ago. We are not getting a Series X exclusive game for up to two or three years. I might be getting so. that wrong, but that should be the year year time frame, and that is incredibly generous. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say I would do that in Phil Spencer's shoes, if I'm being completely honest. Um, that gives everyone full time to, to you know save up the money. It gives them two years to really save that money up and. You justify that five hundred dollar price point that me and Alex are guaranteeing it's on, right? Alex, do you agree with me? Mm-hmm. Five hundred bucks. Next. Yeah, if I, 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 it's five hundred. Five hundred. Okay. I was wondering if you were gonna say five fifty. It's five hundred. No, no, no. I think the PlayStation will be five fifty. Mm. And also to note, there aren't a hundred million PS4 owners right now. That is how many they've sold. That is not mm-hmm. everyone with a PlayStation Four right now. Just, just to clarify, just in case you didn't know, yeah. people sell their PS4s. Uh, those PS4s break. Though that that's not everyone has it. That's just an easy way for you guys to think about. It, just in case you didn't know, this is a fun fact for you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. You know, they, the, some of those are sitting in GameStop's, not being sold. Any word on that, Alex? Was it? Did, was I wrong? Am I completely wrong? Two or three years? Um, I think it's two and three years. I think it's three. Honestly, three years. I uh, couldn't find. It's a hard thing to Bing, of course. Yeah. We use Bing in this in this house, this achiever house. Oh, for sure. We being everything. Um, no, I. But I, all I all I can hear is uh, Phil Spencer doing it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, it, it game. I mean, continually with Game Pass, I'm very excited for next gen. Never been more excited for next gen. I think um, mm-hmm. than right now. And this is the most interesting next gen. Honestly, this is a next gen where PlayStation is vastly dominated this gen. Um, mm-hmm. I I don't think. Xbox, quote unquote, has lost. I don't think there's a losing way for this. They all make money, but um, mm. PlayStation has definitely won if you're comparing units sold. But uh, it's very impressive to see these two things um, come together so differently. Alex, why do you think we see? And I brought this up with a friend of mine today. Why do you think we are seeing a PlayStation that is so weary? of what xbox is currently doing it does seem like they're very reactive to microsoft rather than the opposite you would think microsoft would be the one that wants to one-up playstation not playstation one because playstation is the one that's sold the 100 million units they've got giant uh Mm. ps now numbers they have incredible game studios I think it's that they don't want to screw it up because then they'll lose all, uh, a lot of fan base. That's a good point. That maybe they, maybe they're terrified. I mean, I if I remember correctly, there's still a good bit of people left from PS3 days. I mean, not that oh, many, yeah. but there's still good. There's people there that remember what happened with the PlayStation Three. If you don't know that, what happened with PlayStation Three? 
Look up the E3 PS3 E3 499 fiasco. That's hilarious. Oh no, it's 50, it was 549.99. Look that up. That is oh, an incredible sure. E3 that was just terrible. It, and it, and it's just awful. It's on, it's on par with how bad the Xbox One reveal mm-hmm. was. Um, um and yes, you, you by the way you were correct. It was 2 years. 2 years. I thought it was okay. I would have bet money on it 3. It says over the next year, two years all of our games sort of like PC will play up and down on the of the family of devices. Wow, crazy! Again, uh, yeah. just to reiterate, I don't even know if I'd make that decision if I was in his foot. But that's very generous of them. Um, that oh, yeah, is guaranteeing yeah. every Xbox owner that they're getting two years of quote unquote next gen games. You know, you can mm-hmm. argue if it is or it isn't, um, but that's very exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Kingdoms of Amulet. Re Reckoning Remaster appears in the Xbox Store. This is over on Windows Central yet again. Good work by the Windows Central team this week. Kingdoms of Amalur was a cult RPG for those who do not know from the Xbox 360 era that, while polarizing at the time, is remembered fondly by many who actually gave it enough time, which I believe are like 10 of your friends and that one weird guy that doesn't really, you know, he's kind of weird in art class. It's that guy. Hey. And <laughs> that's that, that, that was Alex. That was Alex. With art by Spawn creator Todd McFarlane and writing by noted high fantasy author R. A. Salvatore. Um, do you think he's related to the Salvatore brothers from Vampire Diaries, Alex? It has to be. It has Just to be, to, right? Yeah, Doesn't make any yeah, sense sure. other way, right? Not for sure. Kingdoms of Amalur should have <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur <laughs> should have proven to be a big hit, but sadly the studios that built the game ultimately folded under the weight of large loans issued by the state of Rhode Island in the U.S. THQ Nordic purchased the license to Kingdoms of Amalur in 2018, leading to speculation about possible sequels or remakes. Now we know that it's the latter. I'm pretty sure it's the former as well. I'm, I highly doubt they're not remaking this game. THQ is making millions of games right now. Yeah. Friendly feline Microsoft leakster Hawksod, what the fuck? <laughs> uncovered a <laughs> Microsoft store listing for Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning on Xbox One, which describes a remastered version of the classic RPG complete with refined gameplay. The Microsoft store says it will be available on August 11th, 2020. Seems real. I saw the mm-hmm. page. It doesn't seem real. Sorry. It is real. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you don't get, you don't make a listing and, and you know, it's fake. So, yeah. The game's coming out most likely August 11th. Exciting. Alex, are you playing this? Is, is this something you want? I, yes, I want, to, I want to because I, I did play the original. I just never beat it, and I was really invested when I did play it. I just, you know, stepped back from it, and I forgot about it. I kind of regret not playing this game because I've heard so much that it was fun. And I did play it. We played it together, I think. This is when we lived together, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, yeah. And I played this, and the the what was so alluring about it was the combat was so cool. You oh, got to sure. like do these crazy finishing moves with like your hand as a mm. sword, like magic sword thing. It was really cool, and it's in yeah, it, yeah, yeah, those spinning blade things that you could yeah, throw. And come yeah, yeah, the chakrams. You. Yeah, you could throw the chakrams around. It was a unique gameplay, and oh, it was sure. really fun. So I'm hoping they capture all that and put it under like a pretty code of like 4K or something and make it just a little bit prettier. That would be oh, yeah. very exciting. I, I I want to see that game um, remastered just enough to me, to me to look at and be like, all right, that that looks good. I want that. Yeah, Alex, mm-hmm. that's the news no for news? the week. If you guys didn't notice, we do do topics uh, pretty rarely. I'd say at the end of the show, we are now moving topics. Um, to a separate show we are calling Easy Achievers Plus that days view every single Monday early, of course, on Patreon that will uh, always go up as we film them. But every single Monday, you will guarantee an Easy Achievers Plus, of course, when you can make it. And, of course, going to patreon.com slash Easy Achievers helps us guarantee that we can get all this content out to you as early as physically possible. Of course, the more people that go there, the more people that free, uh, that, that freeze our time up to be able to devote more and more time to this to eventually... It's just our jobs. That sounds really yep. good. And to give you guys a sneak peek, this Easy Achievers Plus to start it off is our favorite achievements. What are our favorite achievements throughout our gaming history? Our, t- what, f- um, probably 15-year gaming history for us, Alex, you'd say? Um, mm-hmm. On Xbox yes. specifically, I'd say? Yeah, there, 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 there's, there's been a lot of years, so it was really hard to to go back and remember some of them it, it took me a minute i i scrolled through literally 
Not figuratively, guys. Literally every single game I've ever played on my Xbox. I went through mm. every single game. Looked at all of them. Now, of course, not every achievement. But every game on my achievement list and wrote down every one that I loved. And I'm very excited to go over this with you guys. Of course, over on Easy Achievers Plus. And just in case you forgot, you can find Easy Achievers Plus every single Monday on podcast service or YouTube for free. And then you, of course, go to patreon.com slash Easy Achievers with the new revised page and give us some bucks to get everything early there as well. And then you can keep it here every single Friday to get your regularly scheduled Easy Achievers gaming podcast every single Friday on every podcast service of your choice and YouTube. Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'll leave you guys with this. Hmm. I was making molten lava cakes the other day. And, and man, by the other day, good. And by, uh, by the other day, I mean yesterday. Um, and I was using, what was I doing? No, no, no. Mm. So I'm sorry. What I was doing was I was cooking a pork tenderloin. Okay. And I was making a, a, a you could call it a stuffing. It's called a Tuscan pork loin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was making this pork loin, and, and I used a food processor. If you don't know what a food processor is, it's think of a giant kind of bowl-like item that you put on a blender. Okay. It's kind of like an attachment on a blender. You put it on there, and then you spin it up, and it kind of breaks up whatever's in it. Just think of a big blender, but for food. Hmm. And I uh, blended my things, and I went to clean the blender because, of course, there's meat all over it now. It's kind of gross, but I'm cleaning it up because the you know I had the stuffing. I stuffed it with more meat because I'm a gross human. And I went to clean it, and I was cleaning it with a paper towel. And uh, food processor blades are very, very sharp. And uh, I went to uh, clean a little bit of the gunk off, and I pressed a little too hard, cut right through the paper towel, right into my thumb finger. Uh, got real deep, <laughs> got real yeah. deep in there. Uh, bled a lot. Was Did able to. Know? Was it? Was it? Um. E- you know, I don't. I want to say no. Something stopped the blade mm. from keep going in, so I wouldn't um, be surprised I, if it was I, I a think, bone. <laughs> I think no, I think I think the blade was just like I think I cut him enough, so I think I'll stop right the here. The blade, the blade probably took pity on me. It no, was like sure. I, I, I gave you a good one. I'll stop, but I, but I, it's been a while since I've bled profusely. Mm. Whew, it it just poured out of me. I, I sh- immediately shoved it into a um, into a paper towel to stem the bleeding, but it just wouldn't stop. It took a good couple minutes for it to stop. I, I was contemplating doing the Alex badass maneuver of just gluing it shut that you've done. Um, oh yeah, that's, it, it's, the most, blue, it's the most it's the most Rambo blue. thing I've ever heard any human being tell me casually uh, on a Xbox gaming party chat. But you have <laughs> done that before, and I thought about. It. I was like, should I do that? And I was like, eh, I'll give it a second. <laughs> Because mo- mainly I'm terrified of actually gluing my finger shut. Well, I w- it was when I was cut. I got cut with glass, and I just sat there, and I was like, I need to figure out how to stop this. And I was doing dishes, so I was like, <laughs> I told my wife, "Don't freak out, but pass me the crazy glue." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all. That's glass. something you want to hear from your significant other. Don't freak out. Hand me the glue. <laughs> and guess, and guess what? She hands me the crazy glue, and then freaks out. <laughs> don't don't look over here. <laughs> Yep, but hey, it, it stopped it. I just like t- held it tight real quick, put some crazy glue on there, let it dry, blew on it. And it was it stopped bleeding. I mean, in so, a couple of days, that glue would come off anyway. That's so impressive. It, again, I I, n- I never thought of it, and it sounds terrifying. But again, you're fine, right? You like you haven't died. Yeah, I mean, I probably burnt some brain cells, but hey. <laughs> I I I tasted toast for the next twenty minutes, but I I, I turned out fine. <laughs> yep <laughs> on that note guys thank you so much for listening thank you so much for tuning in and remember celebrate an achievers full year use the hashtag achievers year i guess i don't know first Ooh. year achiever achiever first year, year. I don't achievers know. year one achievers year one there you go achievers year one hashtag us achievers year one tag us in it i will like it all and i will come and stare at your face only if you look into a mirror and say my name three times will i appear to eat all do of it. your cake. Do it, all of you, do it. Do it, cowards. He's gonna, he's gonna appear in the mirror, not just in the room with you, but just like yeah, in, just the in the mirror with some cake. And then I'll eat it, slowly. And then he slowly disappears, he just fades away, like back to the future. Like, yeah. He just fades. 
existence. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like that better. I like that better. We're making a we're making a Disney Plus show here, and I'm digging it. Amen. We're gonna go. That's, we're gonna go really Disney. iron this. <laughs> we're gonna go iron this out. But until next time, remember, go achieve. Go achieve.